Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another tutorial from PH Studios. Uh, I haven't done a tutorial in a while, mostly because of classes, and I had four classes, which are 12 credit hours, and I was working 30 to 35 hours a week on average, so it got a little bit busy for me. So I did not release any tutorials lately. I'm not taking any classes now, and I'm getting a little bit of hours, not that much, so I'm going to have a lot of free time over the next few weeks so I'll be doing a lot of tutorials to make up for it and I, almost, I only have one class next semester so and it's still gonna be busy but hopefully I'll get one or two tutorials a week like I always wanted to do I hate that I haven't released anything for you guys and it's been a little bit slow for me but I have classes and that takes priority sometimes I don't want to end up with a few D's or F's because I was doing a tutorial or two so hopefully you can understand that but I'm here now so let's talk about maps alright so we have a bunch of tiles and we want to represent them in a map so how do we do that what, how do I get this result now this is the full game I'm running the game here from Visual Studio so that's a full end result that I have textures or tiles Represented on the screen that are uh, that are told how to represent it by a text document. And if you see on the top left, there's an A, and top right, there's a B, bottom left, there's an A, and bottom right, there's a B. That has to just represent on the text document the corners of the document to make sure everything lined up correctly. Make sure my math was correct and my calculations were correct and everything like that. And the rest you've seen in the, I did a little bit of modifi modifications, but you saw that in the promo picture. As you see, the tiles are a little bit shorter on height, so it's a wider. And the reason I did that is because we want to fit evenly the tiles on the screen. We do not want to have a line of tiles that are just barely on the screen so they go out of the bottom we want to fit evenly the tiles on the screen so I built the tiles to have a pixel resolution that will fit 20 tiles wide and 20 tiles tall high so that way we can fit 20 tiles in the horizontal direction and 20 tiles in the vertical direction All right. So that's how what the end result will be. Now let's worry about what you're interested in, which is just how to get it from a text document to the actual game itself. So let's look at the text document. Okay. So like I said, I built it to where it sort supports 20 tiles wide. So there's 20 characters here. Then 20 tiles tall. So there's 20 lines here. Now they're labeled A and B. You can label them how many, however you want. You can label it one. Preferably, it's built for one character. So preferably, you should stick with either A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just numbers or letters to represent the uh, tile you want to represent. And save like you can do both too, like one, two, three, E for enemy or uh, E for exit or B for beginning, stuff like that. All right. So now these dashes are empty tiles. They will not be drawn. They're just empty tiles. Now this is the first to, uh, part of the tutorial. I'm gonna work on the next part, which is actually drawing a little character. I don't work that hard on graphics for random tutorials, so it'll probably just be a stick figure and that we can move around, jump, and jump on the tiles and stuff like that. Okay, so since this is the first part, I'm not going to go that uh, far into the tutorial. This is just mostly like a comment, video comment for the tutorial. I will explain a lot of things. But I will not code myself. Okay. 
So, what we have here is 20 characters wide, 20 lines. And these dashes are empty tiles. They are no tiles. We'll be... It's just empty. It's passable when we get our character moving here. These are passable. Now this A and B, these are different tiles. I built this with the tile sheet. You can build them however you want. You can build them to where they're separately. So you have a tile that says A and a tile that says B. So it will actually be easier. So you just have to load. Oh, I see character A. So load A. Oh, I see character B. So load B. So I just modified the texture. Okay. So you can build it that way, which is a lot easier. But I like to use tile sheets or sprite sheets of my games. Okay, so now let's talk about getting this to turn into the game. So for that, I built a map class that takes the text document, builds the tiles into a char array. Like I said, it's only character, does character by character. So it builds it into char array. And of course, I have to tell it the empty tiles so it will not loop, it will not waste uh, cycles looping through when it has an empty cycle. So don't, I do have to check for that every time now. I do have the tile sheet. I do have the background, which is the grungy sky. And these are free to use however you want. These pictures, you can use them however you want. Then I have a dictionary, and what this does is, since I did it as a sheet, also the reason why I did this as a sheet is because everybody's done the other one before. I saw a lot of tutorials on how to do this, and they all did load the character. So load A, load A to PNG, load character to PNG. I want to do this as a sheet because if you have multiple tech, if you have hundreds of tiles. It's better to load one tile sheet than load hundreds of individual sheets. So what I did is I did regions. So there's a dictionary for regions. We'll get to that later. All right, so here we go. Let's go into the code. I will have one constructor. It takes content manager content so we can load in the tile sheet. It takes the file name of the, uh, whatever this is, the map. It takes the tile, as, tile sheet asset. So what we can load it to, just the asset name. And you can get to that by just single clicking the tile sheet and you get asset name is here. If you do not have that, just go to view and it's a uh, properties window. Right there. I have a vector 2 dimensions that tells me what dimensions the uh, tiles are. And I tell it the empty character. So I built this as a object, as a abstract as possible. So it will ask you for an empty tile, but you can, you can change it up to where it's a uh, line like that. Or it's a star. Or it's a dash. See if it's a star, I just go into the gamer.cs and you can see I call the constructor and I pass it that. So let's change it to a star. And let's see what happens. Let's see. Okay, so I replaced them all and I saved the other one as a document. Just in case things go wrong, I can get back to it. Alright, so I replaced all the dashes with the star, and of course I had to tell it to change the empty character to the star in here, asterisk, and the construct. So now I'll press F5, oops, I just deleted the entire thing. Alright, so it still did the same thing, but if I did not change that, let's see what would happen. It would just crash. 
and we'll get to all this stuff later. Okay. So let me replace it the way we had it before. And there we go. Alright, so now let's go back to the map.cs. Alright, so we got this content is equal to content. So we'll get the content manager so we can load up our towel sheet. And so we just set up everything, initialize the tile regions dictionary, and then we load the towel sheet. So it's just called content that load. It's a texture two D and pass it the asset. Then we read the file. Now to read a file in the XNA, it's a little bit different than the way it was before 4.0. So I did the new way instead of showing you the old way since this is using 4.0. It's a lot easier to do. We need to build a stream reader. I called it reader is equal to new stream reader and in the constructor you call tile.container.openStream and then the file name the complete file name and I think this one's relative now there's int width and height I'll get by the way I'll get to how I got that easily in a few minutes now we have an int width and a height. Of course we know it's 20 by 20, but we can just simply change that into the text document and it'll automatically change in here. That way if we don't want to actually read in these last few lines, we don't have to worry about the coding. We can delete these lines and it'll still be the same. Of course there's no A and B at the bottom, but we didn't have to loop through that four lines that we had before. So if you do want something there, you can have it there. But if it's just empty lines underneath that B, empty tiles, you can delete the entire thing. Now of course you can't do that up there or that'll push everything up. So I left the A and B here for the corners of the document just to see if everything lined up so I'll just leave it there you can remove it and it'll actually save you a little bit not much since it's only four lines but a little bit okay so I have the width and height of course the notes but gonna be ended up to be 20 and 20 now we need to get lines from file because we need to loop through and read it the width and then the height so width we get the line not length. Of course we get the width of the first line. Now if it's a little bit different than the rest of the lines. Well, let's see if I put a C here and a C here, not a C but A here. A A delete that. Uh let's delete this. Okay. So it's one less. So now if we go back, it's just going to be indexed out of range. So it's just going to be indexed out of range. So you can correct that by like throwing in a new exception, or you could just do it this way. Now for the next part, we will do some uh, correction and stuff like that. Like if it's out of range, I would add it to the add the empty character to fill it out, probably. Okay. But anyway, the width is from the first line. It's a good idea to make sure everything's all lined up. So the width is from the first line, and then we loop through every line, and we just increment the height until it's done. We add the line, then we read the next line. We loop through, increase the height, add the line, read the next line, increment the height, add the line, read the next line. And then until that's done, we do not have our proper width and height. When it is done, we can generate our tiles with the width and the height. So now we do a two for loops. 
because you gotta loop through every character in the line and then 